at last, at last, I've been on this homebrew challenge for over a year and I'm finally gonna make my first Belgian beer, Belgian IPA. And in the course of doing that, I'm also going to put to the test this pressurized growler from Craftmaster. Rainbow roses, I'll pass the red and white. I want roses that represent the colors in my life. Call me a dreamer, but I know I'm not the only one. If I could have it my way, rainbow roses, everyone. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And my excitement around this style is because Belgian beer styles are my absolute favorite beers. And this one is a doozy. It is a combination between an American IPA and a Belgian triple. What is not to like about that? Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that I usually brew two and a half a gallon batches. I have a lot of beer to drink, but not this week. I'm going all in with a five gallon batch. So let's get this into the water, which I've already heated up to a strike temperature of 154 Fahrenheit. Roses, yeah. Now there are a few ways you can approach this style. What I'm doing is I'm going to build a beer that uses Belgian grains and European hops. But actually you could approach this style even using American grains, uh, say two row pale malt, for example. Uh, the important thing, of course, is that you do use Belgium yeast. That really is a must. So for my recipe, I am building a beer here of 1066 original gravity. So about a 7% beer. 78% of my grist is Belgian Pilsner malt. I'm also adding in 15% of Belgian two-row pale malt. And to add a little bit of biscuity character, well, I'm adding in 8% of biscuit malt. Now, when you want to take your beer on the road, a growler is always a good option, especially this delightful Saints and Devils Brewery growler. Now, the, uh, the thing with growlers is they're very easy. You can just literally fill them up straight from the tap. Uh, the downside is the beer, well, it'll go flat and stale pretty quickly. So you're gonna wanna drink it probably the same day as you fill it. Enter a pressurized growler. Now, I love the idea of pressurized growlers and I've had a few of these. And what this does is it keeps the beer under pressure, just like it was in a keg. Um, and this one comes with a tap handle as well. Now this specifically is a Craft Master Growler and it's 128 fluid ounces. So a gallon of beer, double what this can uh, store. I think they do sell one that is 64 ounces as well. Now I have actually been using this quite extensively for neighborhood parties and whatnot. It's a really nice way of taking my beer out. Um, it appears to have some kind of insulation in it as well because uh, I've had this in direct sun on hot summer days and it seems to have kept the beer pretty cool. So I'm just going to show you really how it works. I mean, basically what it comes down to is that you've got the, you've got the uh, growler itself here and yeah, insulated, I think. Uh, and it also comes with this, which is where you install a CO2 cartridge. So when you get this growler, you'll want to get some of these CO2 cartridges. Uh, mine shipped with some. These are 16 gram CO2 cartridges and they just slot into here and then screw in tight. On the top here is a pressure relief valve. And then this dial here allows you to turn the gas on or off. And there's a little PSI pressure gauge here as well. So you can see how pressurized the beer is. 
they recommend that you keep this at a little bit below 15 psi. Uh, this also ships with a tiny little packet of PBW to give this thing a clean. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean this thing out, uh, sanitize it with some star sand, and then fill it up. I just want to purge the oxygen that's in here. So I'm just going to pull on the pressure relief valve and put a little bit more gas back in and purge it one more time. Okay, so I'm going to set this to serving pressure, which is just around 15 or 10 PSI and then turn it off. And then periodically, I would switch this back to on again when I need to top up the pressure. One of those little CO2 cartridges should be sufficient to serve everything that's in here. Okay, let's actually see what sort of pour we get. I mean, <laughs> looks pretty good, right? Cheers. For the hops for this beer, well, we're going for an IBU of 53. It's going to be hoppy. I mean, this, this is an IPA. So the way I'm going to get there is with all European hops, and I'm going to use Styrian Golding as my bittering hop. This will get me to about 40 IBU. I'm going to put this in at 60 minutes, and I have two ounces of Styrian Golding. Then with 15 minutes to go for my flavor hop, I'm going to be adding a Tetnang and SARS, one ounce each of those. Those will go in at 15 minutes. And then right at the end, so at flame out, I'm gonna throw in one more bag here of Tetanang. I've cooled and aerated the wort, and the yeast for this one I'm using is Y Yeast 3522. That is Belgian Ardennes. That yeast is going to give notes of fruit and spice, which is the whole thing we're going for in this beer. It's highly flocculent, really lumpy, so it should mean the beer is pretty clear as well. I'm going to ferment reasonably warm. I'm going to start out at 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius and then probably bump it up a couple of degrees over the next few days. Now it's just a case of uh, waiting for this thing to ferment. Did I mention how much I'm looking forward to trying this one? All right, I am obviously massively excited to try the first Belgian beer of the homebrew challenge. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. What do you think? about this one um to me it is hold on hold on we have help this time to you it is pick one of the descriptors from the bjcp guide wheel and uh, you can you can tell me which one it is we, we were struggling a bit with this last time so um, well, I was going to say golden. Golden, I yeah. think it's a golden amber color. I mean, you can see a glare through it, but it's quite hazy. Yes, it is a little bit hazy. It has not cleared up yet. Yeah. Okay. So do you think we can steal some descriptors for the smell? Well, let's smell it first and see what we can come up with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> idea. Okay, it smells like Belgian yeast. I don't know what descriptor that is, but to me, Belgian drinks have a very distinctive aroma and I love it. What are you getting? So I smell like a very subtle fruitiness. Kind of smells like banana. Oh, okay. You're getting some, some sort of banana-y esters. Yeah, I smell that. Mm, you don't smell that? No, I, I, I can see what you mean. Not a world away from like a Hefeweizen sort of smell. So... Banana is actually right here. Mm. So, okay, estuary. I cannot pronounce any of those. Was it <laughs> ethyl acetate, ethyl hexanotate? Mm. Is that right? 
Is that how you say it? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I think I got the first one right. Hopefully it tastes like this. Alcoholic. Um, I see there's one of your favorite descriptions here, watery. <laughs> Yeah, and you laugh at me. <laughs> it's actually a thing. <laughs> watery is a thing. All right, let's try it. Yep. Yeah, it still tastes like fruit to me. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely a... Uh... <laughs> There's a lot of words. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce any of those. Can liner-like, plastic-like. No, it's none of those things. Oh. Um, oh, is that the mouthfeel one? Where is that? Okay. It's not powdery or drying. For the mouthfeel, it's kind kind of has like a light coating yeah like it's not thick like some of the other beers we've done i think you're picking up on a lot of wheat beer kind of characteristics yeah so you said it smelled like banana it's a little bit cloudy in appearance mm -hmm. uh fruity sort of taste yeah so yeah it's not it's not massively far away from that yeah i i, kn I know that you like belgian beers a lot um to me they tastes like the big brother of a wit beer. What was that awful one that I just said? Oh, was it rancid? Rancid. <laughs> a rancid beer. I, I mean, borderline Martin smoked beer could have been that rancid. That was pretty rancid, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Um, it, I think that one was also bin liner, burnt rubber, and shrimp-like all in one. No, not shrimp-like. Don't do that to shrimp. Shrimp, <laughs> shrimp is don't good. Deserve that. Shrimp is good. <laughs> So if you want to make this beer, and I highly recommend it, link is in the description to the Atlantic Brew Supply kit. Plus I also have my recipe down there. But um, yeah, I think this was a total success. It's, it's fruity, it's refreshing. And wet as an otter's pocket. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>